Romans chapter 8. Now, I'd like to uh, uh, look at verse 20 to 6. For we know that the whole world, the, I mean, the whole creature, groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. They travaileth in pain together until now. Now, when you look at verse 19 of it, it says, The earnest creature, what is now? The earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. So that's why I said, it's time to manifest. And that's why I take verse 25. He said, likewise, the spirit also helped our, no, sorry, verse 25. He said, but if we hope for that we see not, no, note it now. For if we hope for that which we see not, then we, with patience, wait for it. With patience, wait for it. If we hope for what we are not seeing, then we're going to apply patience in taking delivery of it. So when you ask me, hope is another word for expectation. Hope, when you say you hope for something, is another word for expectation. And let me say again that I realize that what you expect, eh, note it now, anything you expect, you will soon take delivery of it. Your expectation is will eventually become your manifestation. I want to say again that God controls us from heaven. How? Through faith. Why Satan controls man through fear? Now, all of you listening to the sound of my voice, if God controls our expectation with faith, because without faith, the Bible says no man can please God. Without faith, nothing. The reason why we come to church, the reason why we go to church is to take in faith and listen to me. That is the reason why the devil got so mad and they said to themselves, now that we are sending our, their baby called coronavirus, let us remove faith aside. Because if we allow these people to have faith, they are not going to have fear because the two cannot live in the same place. I always say that each time fear knocks at your door, don't bother to open. Ask faith to open for you. You will eventually realize there is no one out there. Because why? It's not going to stand it. Like I said again, you have to understand that your expectation is what will give birth to your manifestation. You, many go to church, they don't have right expectation. Many go to church, their expectation is dead long time. Many go to church, they have wrong expectation. And in as much as the expectation is wrong, I mean, outside the will of God, then you are the one that will bring it to manifestation. You have to force yourself to making it happen. And that's the reason for a lot of gimmicks and a lot of gymnastics and all. So I want to say again, how do we manifest now, now that church is open? How can I manifest God, the glory of God? How can I take delivery? The things that will make people look, oh wow, this is a true man of God. This is a true child of God. Wow, you mean God can do this in this man's life? God is going to do my own also. How can we manifest such? So I want to start, I'm going to be very brief in this message. I want to start by saying that we have to live the life that agrees with our expectation. In other words, our life should walk in conformity with our expectation. Our lives. We have to live the life of you. What are you expecting? So if you know what you are expecting, come on. I look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse, I believe verse 28. It said, hope, is a, hope of the righteous shall be gladness. The hope of the righteous shall end up in gladness. Proverbs 10, 28. Now, look at someone whose hope did not end in gladness. Who? Reuben. 
Genesis 49. How did Reuben end? Because of he did not live the life of the right expectation. If he knew he was a senior son of Jacob, like who he was, and he knew that Isaac, his grandfather, got the covenant right of blessing through Abraham, his direct father, and his own father got the covenant of blessing through Isaac, his direct father, then I think Reuben should be expecting that it was his turn to also get that covenant right. But he did not live the life. He deviated from it. All of you hear me. Someone said the other time, and I believe it, you can never eat your cake and have it. You can't eat your cake. You can't just live your life outside the will of God and you still expect God to back you up regarding that expectation that ought to be yours. Look at Reuben. The Bible we describe Reuben later. He says, for he despised the blessing. If he did not, he will not go after the father's wife. Abu got to the father through the father's wife. The Bible says, when it was time, the father pretended as if he didn't know. When it was time to abrogate the blessings, in Genesis 49, he said, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, the beginning of my might, the excellency of dignity, unstable as water. And he said, thou shall not excel. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the how Reuben's chapter closed. Reuben did not live in line with his expectation. Now listen to me, man of God, child of God, listening to me. If it's not working now, it's going to work. It's going to work in as much as you don't stop working it. Work it. What of bad you work it? I'm giving you one point now. I'm going to go to the next one later. We've got to work it. Let it be in conformity with your expectation. <laughs> Someone like Reuben who need such. Someone like Reuben that knows the heavy duty covenant rights that was passed on from Abraham to Isaac, passed on from Isaac to his father Jacob. I think he should be expecting it not to go after the father's wife. And to all of you listening to the sound of my voice, do you know there are people who come into church to look for boyfriend and girlfriend, not because they want to marry, just to have some flick here and there. That just like that. I remember some years back, I was preaching and a lady stood in, sat in front of the church. I noticed she was opening her leg. I noticed she was opening her leg. The more I look, I try to move to one side, she will open the leg to that side. What did I do? I kick the leg. I say, close that thing. You know what? What was she doing? She was asking me whether I will enter. And let me tell you this here, God forbid, if I had entered, maybe I would not be seated where I am here today. That is the truth about it. There are many giants that have entered. God never said you should go under. He said go over. Jesus said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side. Jesus never said let us go under. In life, you choose to go under or you go over. Those who go over, don't go under. Because you can't do the two at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, live the life of your expectation. You're a student, you want to be a medical doctor. Come on, live the life of your expectation. Go through research, go through science. Keep, keep on digging. Are you a man of God and God gives you a message? Don't start deviating. Don't start deviating. Don't start attacking people. On, on, online or anywhere, we should not bring our matter to here and wash our dirty linen. No, any man of God that preaches this way, allow him. Nobody have access to it all. I've seen all kinds of things happen. People preach against what they used to preach for, and now they are attacking it. You must not do this. Those preaching this are this. Those preaching that are that. That is wrong. We are tearing the body. We prophesy in part. We preach in part. 
Don't let's tear the body. Nobody have it right. Has it all. Nobody have the right to be able to preach the whole gospel. I said it before. The only man who preached the whole gospel died the same day. Go and read Acts chapter 7. You will see a man there called Sam uh, Stephen. Stephen exposed the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. When there was nothing to preach again, what happened? They stoned him, he died that day. So God never said we should preach all. So most people come in, oh, why people are taking this one is taking communion, it's wrong. The other one is giving tithe, it's wrong. Oh my God, don't let's do that. It's here, it's in the scripture. If you saw it differently, leave it for those who are doing it. Preach your message. Let's build the body, don't let's tear the body. Don't let's look like champion. I'm seated here now. Who am I if it's not the grace of God? I'm not doing it because I know how to preach more than the other man. No way. God gave everyone a message. Preach yours. Don't attack anybody. Live the life of what? Your expectation. Because I know anyone who is doing that. Let me tell you this here. You are preaching against strike as a man of God. Can I tell you poverty is doing push-up in your church? Poverty is just doing push-up. It's just a matter of time. It will manifest. Go and ask the England church when they started preaching it, when they fell aside. Today, many of their cathedrals have been converted to mosque. Go to England, you see it. So I want you to understand the word of God stands sure forever. So don't let's tear the body. If God tells you not to do, you stay there. But please, it's important you understand. Allow those who will. I know many who are giving blessed. I am being blessed. I know many of my people are being blessed. You can't even tell them not to. There's nothing you can do about it. So I want you to understand that. So we should not come in to attack each other. Rather, let us compliment. If a man of God is doing well, let's join hand and compliment. If a man of God comes up tomorrow to say, well, <laughs> I want to be a president of Nigeria. Can I tell you, the first attack will be from Christianity. It will be from Christians. We are the one that will first tear the man apart. Hey, man of God, why do you want to be president? Look at what happened. These guys will do, they will send us inside with their policemen and soldiers. That's the truth. Because we have never learned to come together as one. Denomination tear us apart. That church, this church, in heaven is one church. I don't want to go into this, please don't let me deviate. Number two, how do I manifest? Number two, after you live the life, please learn to speak your expectation. You also speak it. You vocalize it. Vocalize your expectation. Until you vocalize your expectation, your destiny may not leave local level. <laughs> so you've got to vocalize it. How do I know? In Proverbs 18, verse 21. Uh -huh, watch this now. Proverbs 18, verse um, 21. You are going to see a scenario. Let me you say death and life. No, yes, thank you. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life, it, so you vocalize. If you want death, say it. You want life, say it. Be careful what you say because heaven may hold it against you. So you have to learn to vocalize it. How do I know again? I look at Numbers 13, I believe 31. Numbers 13, 31, some people went in. The Bible says they came back. They said to uh, Joshua, we are not able to take over the land. Um, they said to Moses, we are not able to take over the land. We, it's not possible for us to take over the land. He said, why? He said, because the people we saw there are stronger than we. Can you imagine? That was all they said. Verse 32 of it says, they brought up evil reports. That means they were up. The Bible said they not say they brought down evil reports. Verse 32, they brought up evil reports. So when they brought up evil reports, the evil report brought them down. Because that means that we are up. We are seated with Christ far above. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I trying to say? They, if you read that scripture all down, you are going to see where they said, um, uh, the land eat up its inhabitants. They are going to say things like, uh, we saw the giant in the land. Um, we saw we were like grasshoppers. For God's sake, they were qualifying themselves with wrong adjective. Telling themselves that they were lesser and inferior. Guess what? All those who said it never entered the land. Except Joshua and Caleb. They steal the people. They say, hey, oh boy, keep quiet. We are well able to take over the land. 
Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that Joshua and Caleb were the only one in that generation who entered? Every other one who said they, were, they could not, God never bothered to take them in. They all died in the wilderness. And so God raised another generation that Joshua and Caleb led in. By the time Joshua and Caleb will lead them in later, Joshua was now the leader while Caleb was just there. And one day Joshua was dividing the goods and the land and he gave Call, uh, um, Caleb, and he said, Caleb, you know you are now, now an old man. Caleb, why not just take this um, plain ground? Joshua said, sorry, sir. <laughs> Don't, how dare you say that? As I was 80 years ago, as I was eight, uh, 80, as I was 40 years ago, so I am now. As I was 40 years ago. Don't look at me, I'm, I'm 85. As I was 40 years ago, so I am now. Give me the mountain. Give me the mountain vocalizing your expectation give me that's where that many would have gone for the playground, ground but the man knew what he expected a long time ago so it was time to vocalize it he opened his mouth and he demanded it from joshua he was simply saying joshua don't pity me because when people pity you they kill you in the pits mm -hmm. don't pity me give me the mountain it's my rights so what am i saying live the life of your expectation don't live anyhow Oh my God, I, I, I like to go a little bit with this. Maybe I add one more. Dress like your expectation. I will give that. Dress like your expectation. You see, you have to begin to, apart from talking it, you got to also dress like your expectation. You know, I, I've seen many people, especially today, a lot is going on. We a situation where... There are some laws that are about to be passed in Europe now where people can walk in, in some of the European countries where they say some people can walk on the street naked. It's a law. They want to pass the law. They are debating it. That people can just remove pints, remove everything, and begin to walk on the street naked. Is that not what Yoruba call were? Eh? Is that not what they call it? That's the so you can, you can imagine. That's their expectation. So you have to dress like where you are going when you give your life to christ part of the things in the package is your dressing someone should see you and know that you are a child of god that's why personally i don't bring any pastor on the altar if you are not well dressed the day you come in to preach for me and i see the way you are dressed i call you as i say sir sorry you may not be able to preach today the reason is because you are like a mirror so what am I trying to say? You never meet me, for instance, me, flying my shirt. I wear my t-shirt, I wear my jeans, I talk in. I just want to be that person that I'm seeing. I want to be. Who is your role model? A situation where a man can wear trousers and the trouser is falling from the waist. And we are seeing his boxer. And this man is telling us that it is called sag. Then I want to ask again, which of the president of the world ever had a sack trouser? Those are the things I want to ask. Or, ladies, don't let me talk about much about ladies today. I believe they understand what I'm saying. Walking and showing your bust on the street uh, and telling yourself, well, it's modest. It's not. That's supposed to be private parts. You, you don't, you don't, when you expose your, 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 your sugar ants shows up. Ants don't marry. That's the reason why many people are where they are. Because ants will never, never marry. Ants only come to suck. After sucking, off they go. It's important we note that today. So, dress like your expectation. Because your dressing is your number one address. I don't know where you live. Parkview? Where do you live? I don't know. Banana Island? I don't know, but when I see your dressing, that's the first address. Because why? I will address you the way you are dressed. So it's important you understand that. Number four, you must learn to give in line with your expectation. Give in line with your expectation. I teach scriptures. Hear me. If you are not a giver, you don't have access to next level. I can give you so many scriptural reasons. 
Even God himself could not do anything until he had to give his only begotten son. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that means love and giving, they work together. Once love is dear, you want to give to us what you love. And it's important because I've heard people say, I love the Lord. Yes, I know you do. But when I see your level of giving towards God's work and towards God's cause and towards God's things, then I will tell you where the love is. It's important you don't forget that. So I want you to understand what I'm saying here today. You give in line with what your expectation should provoke your giving. I love God. Show it. I love the Lord in your giving, in your tithing. So money comes in. It's not after I spend it. Oh, yes, so how to pay tithe? No, it's first. It's the fact. Once you don't remove it before you start spending, you, you have gone against it. You've not done it with love. So that means it's in your heart. The, the, your giving, your tithes, it's very, very, very important to everyone. Don't mind those things you are hearing. They've tried to attack the church in a different way. They have failed. Now they brought coronavirus. They are still failed again. Oh, they are giving, they are, these pastors are taking your tithe. You know, somebody gave a statistics about more than in Nigeria, for instance, close to 200 private jets. Do you know what? By the time they categorized how many pastors have private jets, they were not up to five or maybe just barely five. So unbelievers, when one of the president's daughter or son in Mina also had a wedding, can I tell you, there was no place to park private jet, Babangida. There was no place to park private in the, in the state. They have to park it in neighboring states. It was reported. No place in the airport. Everywhere was jammed. They had to park it in the neighboring state. They drove in from road. And there was no single pastor there. So everything is pastor this, pastor that, pastor this. You know why? Because the devil is mad. The devil knows that it's the church where we raise destinies. It's the church where we remove fear and give people faith. It's the church where we give people direction. Many hopeless people have come into church and God has used us to change their destiny and their lives. So many people were poor. They came into church. God has used us to help them. One way or the other, they now have hope. So many bad boys have become good guys. Prison can't change anybody. It's the word of God that can change. Prison cannot, if you like, build the whole city and put prison. Criminals can only go there, they come back. They call it correctional center. It's, not, it's a breeding center, it's not correctional center. It does not correct anything. The only power to correct is the word of God. Some of us are here now. If not for God, do you know where we would have been if not for the scripture? So many people major. I know this is a fake pastor. One pastor uh, excreted, the other one, uh, uh, whatever, the, the other one fat, he, he fat somewhere, the other one this, the other one did this, the other one messed up. Yes, I'm not doubting every professional has it. So now let's major on it and begin to tear each other apart. Locate it, check, by their fruit you shall know them. <laughs> so, give in line with your expectation. To push the kingdom. To push the kingdom forward. When we are talking about most of the churches that are bought over uh, in, 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 in England. Now, turn to monks. Who brought the money? Somebody. Somebody. A lot is happening today. The Christians are tearing themselves apart. A man of God comes up now. Well, God told me to be the, the president or the state governor or one thing. You are going to see Christians will face them. One of the fathers at the time, who was a camp president, when this father will come up and talk, it's Christians that will bombard this Baba. They will say all kinds of things against Papa Ayo. They will say this, say that. The Baba is not speaking now. We have seen all he said. You are seeing it. People, it's Christians that we talk. Hey, it's this, it's that, it's this. It's not talking now. He's not talking because he was talking. No one was listening. Who we are those insulting him? Christians. Christians. 
They were the one talking, but now the amount is God. You know what? There is now coronavirus, this thing, gagging everybody's mouth now. On the physical, we are seeing it. The one inside, only God will help us. Hallelujah. Please, I don't want to go so deep into this. So, give in line with your expectation. I can give you scriptural backing. In 1 Chronicles 27, in, sorry, 1 Chronicles 21, verse 7, from verse 1 to 7. Now, 1 Chronicles 21, he said, And Satan moved David to mobile Israel. <laughs> Satan moved David to, to take an erroneous step. And because of that, calamity came upon the land. People began to die. Coronavirus visited the land. All kinds of pandemic took over the land of Israel. And it was then David needed to immediately put a stop to it through his giving. Quickly, he saw Aruana. The God told him to go and quickly make an altar in the threshing floor of Aruana. He took the altar there, prepared it, and Aruana said to him, Oh king, thank you that you came to use my treasure floor. Take it free of charge. David said, No, stop it. I will not give unto my God that that cost me nothing. Salvation cost Jesus his life. Your giving has to cost something. Anybody who separates you from giving is not yet a Christian. Maybe he has different things. He has a pot or black pot somewhere where he magics money out. It is the truth. It is the scripture. I have seen zeros that God made heroes. I've seen people that were nobody. This same teaching of giving had made them today. They are standing. Have chains of houses all over. Things are working at a time to feed was a problem. So nobody can separate. I repeat again. Nobody. Show me one African nation that had made progress. Do you know why? Our hand is always down. You will hear England gave us AIDS, America gave us AIDS, China sent AIDS, uh, Australia sent AIDS, um, this so so and so sent AIDS. They keep sending to Africa. Show me one African nation that has sent help to America. So, okay, America, we are sending this to help you. England, we are sending help, we are sending food and other materials to help you. You will never see that because we have been conditioned to be under. We have been conditioned to be like slaves. Slaves don't give. And so listen to me. With their giving and giving and giving. Look at what their visa has become. Look at how their land is. What do we do? We take the money here. We go and bank it there. Now they bring the money there. To come and buy product from us here. Then we take this money and go and bank in their bank again. Then, you are, then later you now go and borrow the money. You know why? Because you are not a giver. When well, you are not a giver, you will always give for the wrong cause. That's the truth. So I want you to understand this. But Christianity is not free. The white man, before they came to this level, it was through giving they entered us, they turned us to slaves. They first started by coming to Africa to give to us. Gave to all our kings, gave them mirror, comb, gave them helmets. They will wear helmets. We are short maker and all. They get them free of charge. Before you know it, they gave them an offer to begin to sell their children. And they began to sell human beings in slavery. Why? Giving. The white man didn't just come to capture us. It's giving. American visa lottery, what's all about? It's still giving. This time, they are not coming with chain again. This time, is give them visa, let them come over. So, you know, they don't just give it to foolish people. They have to interview you, make sure you have a... A, a trade, you can, something you can offer to their society. I don't want to go so deep into that, please. Let me don't um, digress so much. So, like I said, number four is that you what? Um, you must give in regard to your expectation. Be a blessing to your man of God. Be a blessing to the church of God. While you are walking, have the kingdom in your heart so that you can activate the covenant. Things are going wrong. You just say, Lord, enough is enough. Remember, I am not alone in this thing. You are in partnership with me. And so, such prayer work faster. Give. So Moses and David was able to stop the pandemic when he offered on that threshing floor. He did not get it free of charge. He paid for it. In fact, they were offering him free. He said, no, 
I will not give unto my God that that cost me nothing. And that was it. So you trigger your expectation through giving. That's number four. Can I take number five and we get ready to close this and I pray with you. Number five, act your expectation. Act your expectation. You have to act it. Put it to action. You can go over the stage, share it to somebody. You have to act it. Your, your, your expectation needs action. You've got to action your expectation. Act it. In Acts chapter 3, you are going to see a man who was, you are about to test of the man who was, this man was by the beautiful gates. He was there, paralyzed. They dump him at the gate, barely to be begging. Because why? All his expectation there was, who will give me money? But one day, some group of men came. This man did five things. Peter came. He looked at Peter. Expectation now. Expected to receive something. And Peter said to him, Oh boy, let me change your expectation now. Silver and gold we have none. But such as I have, I give you. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter jacked the man up. And immediately this man did five things. That's why I say act your expectation. That man that was paralyzed, that people are pitting at the gate, did five things instantly. Number one, as they jack him up, he leaps. Don't be afraid to leap. Your ministry may leap now, but it will not continue leaping. Leaping means unbalanced. Leaping means staggering. Leaping means not stable. You have this number today, you have that number down the other day, you have the other number. It's a matter of time, sir. So, he leaps. Let me be fast. After leaping, number two, Expectation demanding, he stood. Hey, he stood. Did you notice? He was not balanced. He was staggering, wobbling. People are laughing at him. But suddenly he's standing now. Listen to me until you are standing, nobody will understand you. You have to first stand. You have to first stand and stand well. Before you begin to rescue people from water, make sure you are a good swimmer. Or else they may help you to sink. A young um, um, youth couple, we are told, um, was in a boat that capsided. He began to help people, began to help people. He helped one swim, he helped the other. I think on the number third or number fourth or fifth, I can't remember which one. The, there was no more strength. He sank. He didn't know his momentum. He didn't know his the capacity that he had. But I don't want to go into that anyway. I mean, so rest in peace. So, like I said, he stood. You, the, the, the man... That was laid now stood. Number three, what do you do? What did he do? He walked. First, he leaps. Secondly, he stood. Now he's walking. Walking there talks about advancement. Now he left that level. Now he's walking. He's walking. He's walking. Everyone began to see him. He was not just walking, he had a direction. There are people who walk aimlessly. He was not walking aimless. If you see him walking, he's going somewhere. What did he do? Number four, the Bible says he entered. That means over the years, he must have been saying, one day I will cross this gate. One day me too will be in that temple. This gate may be beautiful, but I don't want to end up in this beautiful gate. Me too will enter. So he had a direction. He walked in. The Bible says he entered. You can check it all in Acts chapter 3 when I'm true. Number five, what did he do now? He started glorifying God. Hallelujah. Those are the five things he did. He started glorifying God. He started ascribing the glory to God. Hear me now. Learn to ascribe glory to God. Listen. Listen. If you are a man and you are married to a woman, you see that your wife is no longer in faith, call for help so that she can be rescued. Because what affected that will soon affect you. If you are a woman, you see that your husband is longer in faith, call for help so that he can be rescued. Because if you ignore it, it will affect you. Because why? The two are one. One plus one in marriage is one, not two. 
And so what affected the other? We so affect the other. So it's better we savage and help. Don't pretend. You are a woman, your husband used to pay tight, but now no longer pays tight. You are happy, clapping for him. He goes out now on, 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 on church days. He walks out and without coming, you are you leave him, it does not matter. Let me tell you, whatever affects him will so affect you. If I they cry, eh? we are told that nose should not laugh. Oh. You get where the thing will reach. Nose go take over. I want to uh, stop this message here today. I want to believe that there's something here for everybody. I'm talking about expectation. Now that church is open, they're expecting. The world is watching us. And so for us to be who God say we will be, these are things that we must put in place and make sure we adhere to it if things have to work for us. Thank you.